The News 4 Rundown is sponsored by FH Fur. It's a debate that's sure to get your attention. The battle over statues of Optimus Prime and Bumblebee outside of a local house. Will the Transformers be able to stay in the neighborhood? Plus, take a hike along 66. Adam Tuss is looking at new pathways that could better connect our region. And an unprecedented fight over the D.C. public schools budget with one side accused of breaking the law. The News 4i team is breaking down the budget and looks at the impact to students in our area. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. And we thank you for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast streaming for you. I'm Jim Adler. And I'm Tommy McFly. A lot of news today, but I'm so excited about the Transformers story. I got to be honest. It's Thursday, <laughs> May 25th, and we begin with a look at some of those top stories that were following. New video showing the chaotic struggle moments before a deadly police shooting in Fairfax County. A police officer fighting for his life and a suspect trying to kill him. That's how Fairfax County Police Chief views the body cam video of the fatal encounter from earlier this month. The shooting left the vehicle theft suspect dead. Both officers who used their guns are on administrative leave while the department investigates. New details on an accused killer just 15 years old who police tell us is a threat to the safety of our community. Police say he tried to shoot another teen on a Prince George's County school bus earlier this month. Three other teens have been arrested and charged as adults with attempted murder in connection with that assault. The wanted teen is also believed to be involved in the murder of a woman in D.C. just two days later. Today, Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes was given the longest sentence in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. He's sentenced to 18 years in prison. Now, federal prosecutors wanted 25 years. Rhodes was found guilty of seditious conspiracy in November, and this is the first sentence given to any defendant convicted of that seditious conspiracy attack charge. For more than two years, a robotic spectacle has transformed the D.C. neighborhood. Statues of Optimus Prime and Bumblebee sit along a picturesque Georgetown street, attracting tourists and children for photo shoots. It's so cool. It is cool. I used to walk by that like for two years during the pandemic. That was my hike. But not everybody in the neighborhood is happy about them. Yeah, News 4's Derek Ward reports today about a panel that went down and how Optimus Prime was asked to roll out. Georgetown's had some notable residents over the years, but only one has had to testify before a public hearing to be allowed to stay. Good morning. My name is Optimus Prime. Yes, for more than two years, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee have been posted up outside the home of neuroscientist Newton Howard. Mr. Prime currently overwatches Prospect Street from a rooftop vantage point. Howard, the scientist who founded MIT's Mind Machine Project, put him there to send a message that machines are our friends. And as far as he's concerned, the Transformers are the perfect ambassadors for that message. Because they are iconic. But some public space commission members say they detract from Georgetown's historic streetscapes. Georgetown should be proud to share his visions of transformation. Indeed, Prime was joined in the virtual meeting by the human who voiced Bumblebee in the first animated series featuring the Transformers. They say that this thing sort of sticks out like a sore thumb. And um, I informed them that uh, as Bumblebee, I resented being referred to as a sore thumb. Um, a, a fully functioning healthy thumb, perhaps. On a serious note, attorney Paul Strauss, who's also D.C. shadow senator lobbying for statehood, says this whole debate highlights an overreaching federal presence that no state has to endure, a holdover from the days before home rule. This one particular, uh, admittedly very affluent area, uh, lives under a different standard, and they are subjected to federal oversight, even though they have no real federal functions. There is some support for these Transformers. Like any good ambassador, their appeal is international. Yes, Bumblebee and the other one. <laughs> but people we spoke to are also circumspect about it all. On one hand, I have a kid, and I know that kids are, like, fascinated by it. I see them as art. I think they're, I mean, if they're not, you know, you can see they're made from kind of, you know, spare parts of things, yeah. which I think I find kind of cool. Kind of like it. But I don't know what I would think if I lived here. <laughs> Howard's next door neighbor is okay with them. He bought a lot of energy here with this uh, beautiful statues. It makes the, the place more alive. 
Attorney Strauss, who represents Newton, says they will appeal the commission's decision to remove the transformers. I think it's nice. It's we are tourists, obviously. And hopefully, whatever the outcome, there'll be no hard feelings. Autobots, humans, let us transform till all are one. In Georgetown, Derek Ward, News 4. <laughs> There's really never a dull moment in the city, is there? <laughs> we have so many good trails here to walk and bike along, but a new trail. This new trail right here just opened up with interesting scenery. It's right next to I-66. Maybe the Transformers can go there. There's four <laughs> miles of parallel trail, as it's called, and it opened between the Cedar Lane and Chambridge Road along 66. And News 4's transportation reporter Adam Tuss got a tour to check it out. Cyclists are trying out this new parallel trail right next to 66. And the early reviews? I like the fact that we got a trail there. Uh, it connects up a lot of areas that are now broken up. Tom Feeney rides his bike all over the area and says this gives him a dedicated space. He thinks it's safer than some back roads, but he does say it isn't the best ambiance. It's a little tough, to tell you the truth. Uh, it's a, one thing I didn't expect when I got on it. It's really noisy. Ah, yes, who doesn't want to take a walk or a bike ride right here alongside beautiful I-66? But all jokes aside, this is an important pedestrian and bicycle connection between Vienna and Oakton. It now runs from Cedar Lane to Chainbridge Road. Ken Musimi says he's going to take a test walk on the new path. Of course I would. Yeah, I think if it were convenient for me to use, I would. As long as the... Um the demarcation between the 66 and the trail is uh, high enough and strong enough. I shouldn't see any problem with that. Others will need some more convincing. I mean, cyclists probably will love it, but other than them, not really. This trail was part of the 66 Express Lanes project. The entire trail will be completed this summer and will eventually run from Dunloring all the way out to Centerville. On the new 66 parallel trail, Adam Tuss, News 4. You might sometimes be hiking and going faster than the folks in the cars <laughs> on 66 too. The new trail also connects directly to the Vienna Metro Station. Well, the D.C. City Council will take a final vote soon on a massive budget that they claim will force D.C.'s mayor and public schools to follow the law. We're talking about a measure that the council passed last year on how much money D.C. schools must receive. The News 4 I team has been tracking an unprecedented battle over this year's budget. Our investigative reporter Ted Oberg breaks down what it means for your kids. Confusing, frustrating, traumatizing, all words real people use to describe how D.C. is getting to the finish line in this year's school budget battle. It is a fight in which both sides say they're doing the right thing for D.C. students caught in the middle, even as one side is accused of breaking the law. Come on, ladies. Alex Simbana has twin daughters in pre-K at D.C.'s Tacoma Elementary School. Alex depends on DCPS to get it right when it comes to those kids, but when she looked at this year's initial budget, she says school leaders just didn't. Any loss of funding means positions, means people, and every single person in that building does two or three jobs already. Mayor Bowser's initial budget cut Tacoma by about $256,000, even though Tacoma is gaining students. I thought it had to be a mistake. There was no way that after there is a law in place that we would purposefully break the law and take more away from students. By law, she means this one, DC's Schools First in Budgeting Act. It was designed to keep parents and kids from surprises like this by requiring DCPS to maintain a school's funding level unless enrollment drops steeply. DC education advocate Mary Levy has been tracking DCPS budgets for decades. I did it before there were spreadsheets. And she says this one is a doozy even for her. We do not know why some schools get extra funding and some don't. Once she finally wrangled the mayor's proposed budget, Levy's analysis showed 58 of DC's 116 traditional public schools would get less money next year than they had this year, losing between $11,000 to more than $550,000. Even though by her analysis, nearly half of all those schools are gaining students. 
the kids aren't getting the money they deserve. Mr. Chairman, there are 13 yeses. The D.C. Council unanimously approved this bill, which went into effect this year. The mayor and the chancellor chose to disregard that. They just simply said we're not going to comply with it. Can you tell me how much you love the school's first law? Suffice it to say, Deputy Mayor for Education Paul Kine isn't a fan of this law. The school's first law does not appear to be sustainable because it only allows school budgets essentially to go up. Under schools first, a school's budget can't be substantially cut unless the enrollment decline is great enough to eliminate a teacher. And Kine says budgeting isn't that easy. It's very rare that schools will lose 24 kids in second grade to allow you, quote unquote, to remove a teacher. But the mayor didn't veto it. And Kine says he didn't encourage her to. I didn't weigh in on that question. You didn't? No. The council calls their law schools first in budgeting. DCPS and Kine call theirs student-based budgeting. And under that model, they may award more money to schools with a lot of at-risk students, like those who are low income. So what we're trying to ensure is that students with the greatest needs get the greatest amount of money. There are a lot of schools with very high at-risk populations, and uh, they're getting cut. Now, Mendelssohn and the council have decided to reverse the mayor's proposed cuts by taking $24 million from DCPS's central office and putting that money back into the schools. Just from a matter of stability, that's what the law is about. The city does have plenty of money. Welcome news for parents like Alex, who says at schools like her family's, every dollar counts. We just need to show where our priorities are. The final vote on the budget moving money from central office to schools is expected Tuesday, but this fight may not be over. In our time with Deputy Mayor Kine, he said fairly clearly, the city is examining all of its options and believes the school's first law may violate other longstanding D.C. laws, which could end up with the mayor's office fighting schools first in court. By the way, the only penalty for DCPS not following the school's first law is what council is doing now, moving their money for them. I'm Ted Oberg for the News 4 IT. Thanks for crunching those numbers, Ted. And an off-duty firefighter is being hailed a hero for saving a fan at Nats Park last night. Todd Covington is a firefighter from Kansas City, and he was watching the Nats take on the Padres when a man started choking on peanuts. Mm. Covington said his girlfriend alerted him, and then he sprang into action. I walked up, and I, I tried to move everyone out of the way slowly. I whispered in his ear, as you always do, are you actually choking? And he did nod, and he was unable to move air, not looking for for no recognition or whatever, just, you know, like trying to help out another human being. Grant Paulson from the Grant and Danny radio show on 106.7 The Fan said he was sitting nearby. He saw it all happen, and Paulson says the fans started yelling for help when the man was choking, and that's when Covington hopped over and started performing the Heimlich maneuver. So thank God he was in the right spot at the right time, and at a point when a lot of people didn't know what to do, and I'm sure some were trying to help the best they could, he had the reserve and, and has been in that situation enough to have been really calm and, and very uh, accurately and correctly deliver a, a life-saving maneuver. Covington said uh, he told news for the man who saved he saved ended up staying through the game last night, and he says the Nats gifted him a home run ball, and Covington was in town because he was traveling to different MLB parks with his son. What are the odds of that? Just yeah. Incredible. Oh, that's a wonderful I think story. the Nats won last night, too. Yeah. I to make the night even better. Exactly. <laughs> a little icing on the cake. Hey, the Washington Commanders have experienced, of course, several challenges in recent years. Now they have a brand new obstacle to contend with. The franchise's request to trademark the name Washington Commanders was denied by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. The decision was based on the likelihood of confusion between the team and the commander's classic college football game between the Air Force and Army. On top of that, a local resident already submitted trademark applications with similar names. A team spokesperson tells us they are confident the trademark will be issued. Stay tuned. Well, a local <laughs> staple for pies is making sure everybody gets a slice and more. Henry's Soul Cafe's sweet potato pies are something to crave each Thanksgiving. They're so good. Mm. And you may not know this, but they are giving back every single month on the 4th 
Thursday, they're helping those in need. Super cool. So I was out there today, Jermaine and Thais Smith and the whole Henry Soul Food Cafe. They're serving these delicious meals, no questions asked, providing some dignity and a delicious meal. And today we were on the U Street location. Chicken Parm was on the menu. And Jim, yes. I was there. Um, and between our uh, hits at four oh, and five, yeah. some of our News 4 fam showed up who had seen it. They needed a meal. And it was really great just to see them get what they needed. And it was just really mm. great to, to just experience the joy and experience what they were doing and what they were serving up. They do it every month on the fourth Thursday. Yeah, and you uh, brought some props. I did. For us uh, to props. I no, we're eating the props. I have been dying to get them. in this, and I've got a piece over here. Well, those are my pie. Look yeah. at you just go right in the middle there. So <laughs> I brought you a little that tiny. That affects everybody's slice there, Tommy. That's hey, yours yeah. now. Look at there. That oh is my the gosh. whole pie. It's mine. But hey, I brought you your own slice know, of pie. You know, Leon's been out there, as you yeah. know. You've been out there now. I'm the only one who's just salivated through mm -hmm. the TV. So what's the uh, five-star review? Oh, wow. Right? Right? Better than my expectation. <laughs> the oh Henry's God, Soul Food yeah. Pie is, it's, it's Go legit. Germain. Yeah. My goodness. It's, it's the real deal. And mm. what I love about this, too, is, you know, they do like thousands and thousands of pies at Thanksgiving, so they spread the love and spread the thanks every fourth Thursday. I love and that. In Oxon Hill, in Prince George's mm -hmm. County, at their location there. They've been there for 25 years. Right. And uh, they've been on U Street for 55 right. years. Oh, really? Yeah, like when you think about like U Street history, it's like yeah. Ben's, Ben's, Lee's Flowers, and Henry's Soul Cafe. Jermaine is mm. Henry's son, and they're just, they're awesome. Mm. I only took one bite, though, so when I share this with everyone else okay. after the show, I promise mm. there's just one bite out of it. Yeah, you get the crust. <laughs> the middle oh, of the pie is the best. That's so good. That's part of the pie. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. All right, still ahead on the News 4 Rundown tonight. Are you ready for summer? You don't have to travel far to soak up the sun this Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> You're eating while anchoring. You're really good at that. We'll show you some area pools that are opening their doors and where you can snag a summer job. Plus... Coming up, an old schoolhouse made new again. This is beautiful. Erica Gonzalez takes you inside these converted condos with a very rich history. We have these in all of our penthouse units that we discovered as we were demoing. Next in For Your Home. High utility bills got you down and looking to save a little dough. Call the guy on the back of the truck. Thinking it may be time to replace that old worn out heating and cooling system. Call the guy on the back of the truck. How about a full system tune up and inspection for just 49 bucks? Call the guy on the back of the truck. He's FH Fur. And when it comes to plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical, he and his team of knowledgeable, highly trained technicians are absolutely the best. 877-GOFFER. FHFUR.com. All right, for people not traveling over the Memorial Day weekend, heading to a swimming pool mm -hmm. could be your weekend getaway plan. Most pools, though, are opening for the season on Saturday, but many in our local counties still need more lifeguards, a very important part of the pool. News 4's Dominic Moody is in Montgomery County with the latest on this story. Summer will be here before you know it. I think it's going to be pretty hectic. Uh, every year we get a lot of people coming throughout the summer. And the anticipation of warmer temperatures means you'll probably need a cool place to unwind. Many of us have memories of growing up, coming to the pools and participating in recreation programs. No need to fret, the district and surrounding counties have you covered. <laughs> Many parks and recreation agencies have been getting ready. Montgomery and Prince George's County, along with the district and Nova Parks, are all opening up their outdoor pools and splash parks Saturday. In Montgomery County, here's what to keep in mind. Uh, the cost for uh, admission is $15 per person, but Montgomery County residents do get a discount. So it is $5 for children, $6 for seniors, and $7 for adults. They, along with Nova Parks and Prince George's County, are all looking for lifeguards. Prince George's County is offering $20.26 an hour. Nova Parks is offering $14.75 for newcomers and $15.75 for experienced lifeguards. That's on top of free lifeguard training. The district is also looking to fill summer positions, and the mayor is set to take part in the annual Jump In DC event on Friday. In Montgomery County, Dominique Moody, News 4. Thanks, Dominique, and the loss of Tina Turner was absolutely huge. The music icon brought so much joy to everyone through her work. She was a role model for so many women and people in general and a true 
Rock and Roll Trailblazer. The National Museum of African American History and Culture, they've got so many Tina Turner artifacts in their collection, including an entry for Tina at the Apollo, admiring her dance skills, calling her, saying she has moves like quick silver, and there's so much more you can see. There are all sorts of beautiful images of Tina Turner, both on stage and off, um, at various points in her career. And the cool thing about that is it's a window not only into her as a performer, but also into Tina Turner as kind of an iconic figure um, off stage wow. as well as on. What a legendary life. Tina Turner died yesterday at her home near Zurich, Switzerland, after a long illness. She was 83 years old. And what's old is new again. A D.C. Shaw neighborhood staple, the Morris Schoolhouse, is now getting a second life as condos and townhomes. These are something. News 4's mm -hmm. Erica Gonzalez gives us a peek at the project at today's For Your Home. Down a quiet street in D.C.'s Shaw neighborhood is an old schoolhouse made new again. This was the Morse School in the late 1800s, named after one of the founding fathers of Morse Code. This is the school today, primed and painted to reflect a new life for all those who will call this place home. The collection at R Street, as it's now called, is a series of condos and townhomes, 12 in the old schoolhouse alone, the others right next door. Isabella Schneider is the site's sales manager. I think people, you know, are very drawn to the site for its rich history. While the site is still a work in progress, this is one of my favorite penthouse residences. She took us on a tour to see some of that rich history prominently displayed throughout. In many of the units, there's exposed brickwork, which is the original brickwork. Of course, the facade is the original brick facade that's been painted. They've maintained the historic window transoms, some of the structural beams as well. Once the dust settles, the finished units will be a mesh of character and contemporary finishes. So as you can see here, we have the white oak hardwood flooring. We have sleek cabinetry, two-tone cabinetry with plenty of storage. All of the residences have these really amazing big kitchens. And several offer a taste of city life with rooftop terraces. For the bustling Shaw neighborhood, the collection at R Street is one more example of the area's appeal for young families to plant roots while enjoying the best of city life. That's Erica Gonzalez reporting, and the six units are already been sold, and the price range is six, I'm sorry, $800,000, make sure I read that right, to $2 million. And still to come, lots of good stuff going on. Yeah, reaching new heights, meet the Maryland man who went from sanitation worker to Harvard Law grad. And well, welcome back from hauling trash to Harvard this afternoon. We're learning about a former sanitation worker from Prince George's County just graduated from Harvard Law School. Yeah, News 4's Amy Cho has been following his journey for years and she sat down with him and shares how he's giving back. I'm like really nervous about this one. Can you click it? No, and can you <laughs> no sir. When we last saw Rahan Staten, he was about to find out if he'd gotten into Harvard Law School. Spoiler alert, he did. Congratulations! That was three years ago. Let's go! Since then, Rahan has made the most of his time at Harvard, staying focused on where he's going, but also where he's been. And I ended up becoming like a garbage man, and that's just like when my life changed forever. Rahan says money has been tight for much of his life. His mom left when he was eight, and his dad raised him and his brother Reggie as a single parent. Just different types of poverty, right? There was like housing insecurities, food insecurities. Uh, a lot of times we didn't really know like where we were going to be able to keep our home. It's why he and Reggie both took jobs as sanitation workers. Rahan spent his mornings hauling trash before heading off to class at the University of Maryland. There will be some days in which I just didn't have time to get to the shower and just change my clothes. And so I would kind of sit off to the side because of how I was dressed and that was very uncomfortable, but we made it work. He certainly did. Once Rahan got to Harvard, he made it a point to be friends with the school custodians. They were shocked someone was talking to them. She said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Students don't talk to me. Students would rather look at the wall than talk to me. He started a nonprofit called the Reciprocity Effect to give back to the school support staff. 
He used his own money to buy them Amazon gift cards and also held an award ceremony in their honor. I'm simply trying to pay that forward by giving other individuals a time to shine because I just think we should all be appreciated for the work we put in. And today, all of his work has finally paid off too. Rahan Satan! Next up, Rahan has a job lined up at a law firm in New York. It's nice to be able to say that we finished this. Things are on an upward trajectory. We made people smile through it. I'm just excited. So proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank Amy Cho, News 4. Wow, what an incredible young man. Rahan has also battled a number of serious health issues through the years. After his story went viral back in 2020, the actor and producer Tyler Perry stepped up to help pay his tuition. He talks about upward trajectory. That's hey, so this cool. This guy is the limit for this guy. Absolutely. Yeah. What a great story, too. And like knowing, just having such a great background. What an awesome dude. I, know. I tell you what, it is. All right, that's going to do it for us on the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for having us in. I'm Jim Adley. And I'm Tommy McFly. We'll see you back here tomorrow.